Well, I spent the last two days trying to drain this pond and now it is raining. It's not bad though, not a bad rain, but I also just threw a minnow trap in there. I cast netted the bass and about four or five blue go out of here, but there's still a bunch of minnows in here. Threw a minnow trap and some dog food out there. Give it some hours. I'm actually about to go pick up something pretty cool. I'm not gonna say just yet, but it's for the pond and I'm stoked about it, so. All right, it is later in the day and our pond has become a puddle now. It is still draining. Heck yeah, almost done. But in the last video, I built a little bait pond over here. In that video, I forgot to mention, I ordered a little six watt solar powered fountain just to get this water moving around and kind of aerate the water. And I just got that in the mail today. So I'm gonna set this up. All right, so solar powered fountain. We'll never have to worry about a battery charging or anything. It'll just run off the sun, which here in Texas, we've been getting a lot of that here lately. So, and this was like maybe 30 bucks off Amazon. I'm doing this all one-handed by the way. That will sit on this. Oh, oh, it's small, but it's something, <laughs> something to keep this water moving around and aerating this pond. So that's pretty cool. I need to run home and go fix the freaking trailer lights on my boat. And then I'm gonna head out to the lake and we're gonna go catch some more bluegill to put inside this pond. Here's your shad, baby. So the first time I came in here, I saw like 10 of these swim out. So I knew for a fact to be ready this time. And this time we got them, yes. All right, we got three more bluegill for the pond here. Going into the retaining pond for now. Go get eaten by a bass, man. Go feed them. This bass is like, this is heaven. So many bluegill. There we go. All right, let's go catch some more. All right, I think I've reached the end of draining this out with the sump pump. So I spent the last two days draining this pond and last night it freaking rained and filled right back up. So that's freaking awesome. All right, which one do you want? Uh, I'll take red. Red? Yeah, I'm gonna use white and chartreuse. Yeah, buddy. Three eighths. We're gonna put these bad boys to the test. See what we can do on them. But we got the bio blade spinner bait for fish left tackle. Dude, these are freaking sick. Hell yeah. These are new too, these tails. There's a mimic tail, those are sick. All right, well, like I said, he's got red and black, which is freaking fire. I got white and chartreuse. Three eighth ounce spinner baits. Here we go. Thank you, sir. Dude, that is freaking beautiful. I wanted to see if these are hand tied or yeah, they're actually tied, sweet. Actually good quality spinner baits under that rubber band crap. All right, that makes me happy. You get one and that's it, don't lose it. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Ethan's on a mission to get the lure he already got stuck in the tree. <laughs> that cold, huh? Couldn't have done that in the first place. No, how to get, how to get you wet and learn your lesson. Another bluegill for the pond. We're back in this cove. Can't catch nothing else, you might as well catch some bluegill. Where's your parents at? Got him. Got one? Hey, let's go. All right, just crossed the Tetris Oceans to get out here. It's freaking crazy out there in the main lake. But I fished this cove a lot and I knew it would be calm and it's kind of calm. So we'll see what we can do over here. It's been kind of crap all morning. Too windy, but uh, see what we can do. There's one. On the spinnerbait. Walleye. <laughs> well, the new spinnerbaits catch walleye. Yeah, buddy. That's also our meal for the day. Sweet. 
but my first ever fish on the bioblade spinnerbait from fish lab tackle <laughs> freaking awesome man throw him in the live well and he is our meal what should we make i wouldn't say tacos but i kind of always make tacos maybe i might just bread them up bread them up and uh i don't know we'll see There we are. We got food. We got bait for the pond. Good day so far. Where's your mother at, man? Just caught a little baby bass. No, oh, it's a bluegill. Holy crap. That means we can keep it. I thought that was a little bass. Look at that little turd. The size of a freaking minnow almost. I know there's bigger blue go in here. Where the heck are they? There's a little bit bigger one. That's a start. Keep seeing them coming out every once in a while. So I kind of found them at least. All right, I'm gonna try to get out of here without dying. It's gonna have to go super slow through all these white caps way up there. And I think I'm gonna go try fishing the creek on, on the land. On my feet, no boat. We'll drop these blue go off in the pond, drop the boat off, grab the live well system, and then uh, go see if we can catch some bigger bluegill in the creek. Sounds like a plan. about the wind noise but 22 mile per hour winds today oh quit playing stupid quit. don't worry this guy's gonna die soon anyways we'll be eating him he's still alive he's just not doing too hot but let's go ahead and grab these bluegill throw them in the pond oh there he goes jumped out of my hand tiny little booger at bass as you can see this water so freaking dirty but i'm kind of happy it's dirty because it is freaking hot and i'm sure this dirty water is helping keep the water somewhat cool here's the uh aerator you saw me put in at the beginning i did have to take off the tip because the tip was it kept getting clogged up and not shooting out so i'm happier like this because it only shoots it up like five inches keeping the water in here it was shooting it out and then over this. So that's that, kind of aerating, kind of helping. She's still full. Been three or four days now, she's still full. So that's good. All right, so I just dropped off these three bluegill at the pond. We were stacking up these bluegill. I'm not even sure how many I got in there now, but uh, it just hit a hundred degrees. It is so freaking hot. I'm glad I'm off the water because it was bad. I Usually I go out there, fish for a long time and then jump in. It's to the point where like, I want to jump in as soon as I get to the lake. It is that freaking hot. But uh, it's windy today, so I did not stay out there very long at all. But we did catch a walleye. So I'm going to go do a walleye catch and cook. I have not done catch and cook in a while. But I want to do some sliders. So I've seen these sliders. My friends made me some one time, and they were so freaking good. So today, we're going to make those and then throw in some battered walleye. I think it's gonna be pretty freaking good. So I'm gonna head to the store, go get a few ingredients, and then we'll head to the house and go cook up some walleye. So to make these sliders, you will need Worcestershire sauce or however you say it, some batter to fry the walleye. I prefer chicken batter over the fish fry batter. That's just my opinion. Vegetable oil, salt and pepper, parsley flakes, minced onions. Your choice of sliced meats, I'm going with chicken and smoked ham, Hawaiian bread rolls. I'm making two packs so my family can have some as well. And then sliced cheese, I'm choosing Swiss and pepper jack. Cut the Hawaiian rolls in half, and then lay out the sliced cheese and then meat, and then put the top of the rolls back on. And now we need to mix four tablespoons of melted butter with one tablespoon of washer and dryer sauce, and then half a teaspoon of salt and pepper, and stir that. So since I'm adding walleye to mine, I need to go ahead and deep fry that. I cleaned the fish before I ran to the store. So I'm making sliders. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these down about two inches
Throw those in the ice. All right, there's our walleye. Here is the beautiful walleye meat. This is why people love walleye. It is just a nice, clean meat. I poured out some of the chicken batter, added some slap your mama to it, and now we're ready to batter the walleye. I like to do the double dip method where you cover the fish in batter, dip it in egg, and then back in the batter a second time, and that is now ready to be fried. Make sure your oil is at 360 degrees when cooking fish. That is very important. The fish is now done. I'm going to add it to my portion of the sliders. And now we can spread the melted butter we made earlier all over the rolls and make sure they cover it all. And these bad boys are now ready for the oven. I got it preheated to 350 degrees and I'm going to let it cook for 15 minutes. The sliders are done cooking and I'm going to add more melted butter, parsley flakes, and then minced onions. Don't be afraid to add too much onion because I actually came back and added more to mine. But that's it. These sliders are ready to eat and they smell freaking amazing. These smell absolutely amazing. So good. The dogs are here. <laughs> What's up, <your> big boy? <laughs> All right, it is time to dig in. Got some walleye there, breaded, looking absolutely amazing. Garlic sliders, here we go, first bite. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> As expected, they were amazing. My only complaint is they need way more sauce and more garlic on top. I'm gonna sprinkle more garlic on top real quick. All right, just added more garlic to it and it is absolutely amazing now. The garlic is everything. All right. I'm gonna eat a few more of these, but I just got the ultralight rod in the truck and I'm gonna head down to the creek and hopefully go catch more bluegill for the pond. I got some worms as well, actually. Real live worms. This morning in the last few days, I was using gulp, fake earthworms, which they work, but you can't beat real earthworms. You just, you just can't. Ooh wee, dadgum, it's freaking hot. That's where I just caught that walleye, right there. All right, got something. Hopefully not a turtle. I saw a turtle swimming over there to it. This is a turtle, I'm gonna be pissed. Freaking turtle, oh my gosh, dude. Why? Why? You suck, dude. You suck. I got a little piece of worm down here and I'm using this little net here. And these are the smallest bluegill ever. They will not take the hook. So I got my worm just sitting on the surface. You can see all these bluegill down here, probably not, but I'm just scooping them up. Putting the net down there for a minute, letting them like get used to it and trusting it. And then uh, scoop them up. Pretty easy, just caught three the first time trying it. Just like that. All right, here are the bluegill I caught today. Caught a bunch of these little turds. This is when my GoPro died. I think I caught like three and it died and I couldn't film the rest, but caught, like I said, the little turds. Super tiny, but they'll grow. And then went to the docks and caught the biggest bluegill I think that is in here. Yeah, buddy. Still not a giant, but way bigger than those one inch turds, but Go ahead and throw him in. And then I'm just gonna dump all these guys, but probably two dozen in there. But I found a way to catch these guys easily. I mean, they were literally swimming into the net. I was like, okay, dude. More bass food. And make sure this is draining pretty good. Looks to be. Yeah, it's coming out good. So, spent two days draining it, and then it filled right back up the next day after rain. All right, so I just made the decision to drain the pond again. 
I just checked the weather and it's not supposed to rain for the whole next week. Hopefully that's true. But one good thing about having all the fish out, that can drain it overnight now. Don't have to worry about it emptying because there's no fish in there anymore. So hopefully it won't take two days. Hopefully I can come out here in the morning and it be somewhat drained and then I'll be able to finish it tomorrow, so. All right, it is the next morning and she is officially drained. A little bit of water in there. We'll have to just let that dry out. Hopefully it dries out soon with this Texas heat. I'm gonna get in here with a tractor, clean all this up. You can kind of see where all the ruts from where it rained. Big blowout right here where it rained. It just washes all out. So I'm gonna clean all this up, dig this section out right here a little bit, clean that up, make it all nice and smooth. Same thing around here and then up here as well, around these edges. Get rid of that little drop off right here. Smooth all that out, pack it in, and then you know who you are. I can't say too much, but shout out to you for giving me this right here. This is a roll of liner, which is thick. This is, I feel like this is twice as thick as normal pool liners. This is like, I don't know, this feels like a plastic sheet. But they use this to uh, make retaining ponds. And this guy had some left over and he gave it to me. So shout out to you. So this is like 20 foot and I'm not sure how long it is. Not that long, but it does wrap around quite a bit. So maybe it is somewhat long. 16, 17, 18 wraps. Maybe 18 foot, if that, I don't know. But 20 by 18. The plan with this, since it's not big enough to cover the whole pond, obviously. But I was thinking I could put it in the deep area. Cover this deep area, and that way that deep area is always sealed. And that way I will never have to worry about draining the pond completely. It will always be sealed in this area. So, I mean, it's kind of sealed now. It's holding water there, but I don't know. I just want, if I ever have a problem in the future, I don't ever have to want to completely drain the pond. Once I really start stocking this pond with fish, there's gonna be a lot of fish in there. They'll start reproducing, making more fish. And I can't get them all out every time like this to fix it. So I'm thinking, use that liner right in here. Hopefully it covers a lot and it can be at least four feet deep. And I'll never have to fully drain this pond ever again because that liner will always be sealed. So that's the kind of the game plan I have right now. So I go through and clean all these edges up and pack them down. But this has to dry out first. So probably a few more days of this Texas heat to dry this out enough to get a tractor in there. Maybe even longer. Maybe a week. I don't know. But yep. We are drained. 